blessed that you are joining us on uh, Facebook, whether it's in real time or later. Whenever you're joining us, please go to our website, sfaec.org, and um, you can download our full text booklet. It contains all the music, all the scripture readings, as well as all the prayers. And our opening hymn today is hymn 410, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Hosea. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of whoredom, and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Diblan, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu and the blood of Je Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Lurama, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or, give, or forgive them but I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword, or by war or by horsemen, horses or by horsemen. When she had weaned Lorama, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Loami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 85, starting on page 6. We will read it in unison. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turn yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Mm -hmm. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to, hear, to, to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity grows bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him, when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or observing festivals new moons or sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up with, without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grow with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answered from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, you will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Blessed be God's holy name. Bless the one who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. The young father had been working with his daughter night after night to learn the Lord's Prayer, and this was the night he was going to let her go through without interjecting himself. So he stood in the doorway as she began, Our Father who art in heaven. And a small, slow smile crept across his face as she continued word perfect down the prayer. She got down to give us today our daily bread, and he was just beaming as the next phrase came out, and forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who put trash in our baskets. <laughs> out of the mouths of babes. And so we come to this passage today in Luke a passage where, for the only time in all four Gospels, the disciples look to Jesus and ask him to teach them something. They've been sitting at his feet. They've been following him in the crowds. They've been at table with him. They've been on long walks and journeys with him. But here and only here does one of them ask, after Jesus has pulled aside himself to pray, teach us how to pray. And I think we are back at a time when we are asking the same question of our God. Teach us how to pray. As we continue to navigate times and 
circumstances we never anticipated. As many remain fearful to return to common worship, we are challenged ourselves to look again at our own prayer lives, not only individually, but also corporately. For that is why we, faithful, are here this week, to be together with one another in prayer, understanding the power of prayer of a community. Individual prayer has its place and its power, but there is also the power of prayer in community. Now, like the little girl, somewhere, somehow, somebody taught us about faith and prayer. It may have been in your own family. It may have been from outside your family. But today, we bring those people with us. On those days when we gather, they are here with us because they started a habit, a habit that has to be nourished and perpetuated to continue. And so not only do we need to look at the habit of coming together, but I'm inviting us to a week of prayer as a community. We sorely need prayer in this community. And we are preparing in just 11 days to be out praying with the educators of Hamilton County as they start a new school year. But for us to be prayers, we need to pray too. And we need to ask one another to pray with us and for us. And so today we're going to start thinking about and inviting God back into our prayer life intentionally. Maybe it means revisiting old ways of praying. Maybe it means starting new ways of praying. Sitting in the children's chapel as they have since the night we held the watch with Jesus from Monday, Thursday to Good Friday, our Anglican prayer beads, one way that some people find helpful to pray, and with it, in case you need them, are instructions. We have this available to people all the time. Out in the narthex, you will see hand crocheted squares that have a little piece of paper talking about how to lay that hand crocheted piece on your hand and use that as a way of lifting up prayers. Prayers that can be lightly lifted, just as lightly as that rests on your hand. There are any number of ways that we can invite prayer into our life. Consider your regular habits and consider how you might add prayer in those habits. For example, when the alarm goes off, rather than hit the snooze, or curse the alarm, what would it be like to greet the day with a welcome to a new day that God has given us? As you're brushing your teeth, what would it be like to use that time intentionally to thank God for the food you are taking off your teeth and that you were privileged to nourish yourself with that daily bread we pray for in the Lord's Prayer. As you start your car to go wherever you go, give pause for the miracle of technology and all that has brought us this ability to go from place to place so readily. A century ago, it wasn't that easy for most people. We take so much of our daily lives for granted without stopping to acknowledge the miracle and the wonder around it all. And so this week, that is part of our prayer, part of our persistent prayer. 
But I want to make a point about persistence in prayer. Because sometimes we believe that if we pray exactly for this one thing, and I just ask for it over and over again, that one thing will happen. We're not entering the prayer with open heart if we do that. We have to go back to the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come. Not my kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. It begins with the acknowledgement of who God is, our divine parent, and then it moves quickly to us opening ourselves to God's will, not our will. So in our prayers, that persistence is actually a persistence for the Holy Spirit. You have to read the whole passage through to realize that that's what Jesus is talking about. As we ask, as we seek, as we knock, we are praying for God's Holy Spirit tangibly in that moment in our lives. Sometimes we know those Holy Spirit nudges. We pick up the phone. We do something we hadn't planned on doing. We stop and feel moved to prayer. But we need to keep nourishing and feeding that call within us because all prayers come, as Paul tells us, from the size of the Holy Spirit deep within us. So we are called again and again to prayer. And it may look different for different people. That's okay. If you're not sure what to do, if your prayer life is at a point you need help, you have clergy, you have friends, who want to help you. That wall there, that wall there constantly reminds us of prayer because it is the same stone that the Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall, is made out of. That wall in Jerusalem where people right now are standing with slips of paper with a word or a phrase written upon it indicating their prayer request and sliding it into the chinks because it's not a mortared wall. It's carefully stacked without mortar between the tiles. And so you, too, may take a scrap of paper, go up and put a slip of paper in that wall, leave it up all week. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, write the slip of paper and carry it in your pocket or in your purse. But use this week to be intentional in prayer. And remember that by opening ourselves up, we are opening ourselves better to God. Habits take work. Learning to be in a relationship with God means we've got to make the habit to keep showing up because God is always there. Barbara Brown Taylor, well-known homilist and Episcopal priest, admits in her own book, Altars in the World, that she struggles with prayer. Yes, clergy struggle with prayer. That's why we love the Book of Common Prayer and hymns. And so she talked about one day turning to Brother David Stendhal Rost and asking him about prayer. He told her, prayer is not the same thing as prayers. Prayer is waking up to the presence of God no matter where I am or what I am doing. When I am fully alert to whatever or whoever is right in front of me, then I am electrically aware of the tremendous gift of being alive. When I am able to give myself wholly to the moment I am in, then I am in prayer. Hear that again. When I am able to give myself wholly 
to the moment I am in, then I am in prayer. Prayer is happening, and it is not necessarily something I am doing. God is happening, and I am lucky enough to know that I am in the midst. God is happening. God is happening in these prayer-soaked walls where we come again and again to be in communal prayer. God is happening in our daily lives, in our daily encounters, in our daily moments of quiet. God is happening. So this week, beloved of Christ, be intentional. Return to habits or make new habits that help you be aware of the holy that you, you are always treading on, the holy ground of God. Return again to the practices that others have taught you. Hold those others in your hearts and in your prayers and feel their presence with you because even in the church triumphant or especially in the church triumphant those who have gone before us are praying with us and for us as they stand before, before the throne of God so let us this week embrace again the power of prayer. Let us again turn to the habits that nourish us and feed us and open ourselves to the possibility of new ways to pray. Then let us listen with open hearts, with ears attuned to the whisper of the Spirit. And may we know and feel God's holy strength, God's comforting presence, and the breath of peace that surpasses all our understanding. Please stand. Let us say together the Nicene Creed found on page 11. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop, and for the worldwide Anglican communion, and for guidance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community of Uldawa, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, for all who come here to worship, for our guests and those who are new to the congregation, for those on our parish family prayer cycle, including Al, Mary, and Peter Saren, Rodney, Elise, and Hannah Chamberlain, Lenora and Terry Corbin, and for all who live in places of war and terrorism, for all those affected by the unrest in Eastern Europe, for men and women serving in the armed forces, for Habitat for Humanity and all they serve, for the joy of children and youth, for our ongoing discernment of God's will, and for our parish leadership, including our vestry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, including Zoe Kaiser, Jacob Rouser, Sherry Haggard, as well as those celebrating anniversaries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those on our prayer lists, including Susan Assendorf, Anne Acock, the Bruckman family, Brian Boyer, Clarissa Boyer, Russ Cole, the Crane family, Donna Croteau, Bill and Vicki Dowley, Bill Dozier, Mark Elliott, the Gershman family, Pam Harris, Jamie Hartman, Samantha Haynes family, Diane Honeycutt, Amy Linville, the Loy family, the Moore family, Thames Penderton, G Jenny Reed, Bishop Sanders family, Barbara Selman, the Sniff family, Tyler Walden, Becky Woodson Pelfrey, Olivia Weatherford, Christine and family, Elizabeth, Landon, Retha, Titus, and for all impacted by violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, including Nicolette Gershman, James Riley Wynn, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord have mercy. In the communion of Francis and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Almighty and most merciful God, grant that by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, 
we may be enlightened and strengthened for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. continue to offer uh, communion in two different ways. Josh will have the individual chalices with both bread and wine. I will have the wafers and also have the intention cup if you would like to have your wafer intincted. We usually focus on the gospel, but I want to read again the opening line from the selection we heard from Paul's letter to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Come of you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is bright and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you have sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we await his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Francis and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
using the prayer at the bottom of page 18, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. And uh, Senior Warden, Darius Bagley is with us. We had vestry this past Monday. And thank you for being here to report. Morning, everybody. Uh, Vestry did meet on Monday. Always uh, an interesting meeting, uh, but not a whole lot of announcements, which is probably a good thing. Uh, we have completed repairs on All Saints Cabin, done a ton of repairs up at All Saints. And uh, so if you want to drive up there and check it out, it looks really great. Uh, all the work has been completed on the property, formerly known as Katie Hall. So it's great to see that complete as well. Uh, no plans for that as of yet. We're kind of just going to let that sit and stew for a while and then talk to the congregation a little bit about what to do with that property, if anything. Uh, Mike Boland is working on quotes for the repaving and parking uh, at, at All Saints and, uh, and in the parking lot here. Uh, please sign up in the Narthex if you would like to be a greeter, reader, or sign up for refreshments. Uh, St. Francis Day is coming up, so please contact me or Mary Seren if you would like to assist with St. Francis Day. A reminder, it is October 2nd, 1.30 to 4, and the bishop will be here with us. And Lou is asking, uh, will, will, will be asking for volunteers to be worship leaders for morning prayer. So please consider this as it was a, a very popular uh, ministry in years past. And our next vestry meeting is Monday, August 22nd. And of course, all are welcome. Any questions? Okay, thanks. Thank you, dearest. I deeply appreciate Darius is faithfully keeping notes throughout the meeting so that he can concisely report back what took over two hours to do. So thank you, Darius. You bring a great gift to us. This is another full week here at St. Francis tomorrow night yoga at 6.30. Tuesday and Thursday afternoons, music lessons in the parish hall. We continue Wednesday night at 6 until school starts back with simply doing evening prayers in the parish hall. You're always welcome to join us in person or join us live on Facebook. We welcome your participation however you are joining us. And um, this weekend is the weekend we look forward to every year, thanks to Kristen Herzog Lankford and Rebecca Brewer. We're going to yet again have another vacation Bible school so we're inviting children to be part of Vacation Bible School. And all children are welcome. You don't have to go to this church to be part of it. We'd love to see them. And we're inviting the teens to help us as counselors with Vacation Bible School. So know there is a place for all of you, and we'd love to see you. Uh, Ms. Kirsten is at the back. Miss Rebecca's at the back, and y'all can talk to them as you leave, or call the office, or reach out to them. Their numbers are in the directory just as much as my number and any of the other staff numbers. We are always available to you, so please take advantage. And then, as I said, 11 days from now, we'll be doing the drive-through prayer lunch at the Samaritan Center parking lot for the Hamilton County educators in this portion of the county and all help is welcome we'll start setting up tents we'll be borrowing tents because saint francis is always generous that way borrowing the tents from here to set up so we can cover the food and the workers who are packing the sack lunches will have be giving out over 400 meals in the course of two hours so all hands are welcome and appreciated and your prayers are cherished, as I said in the homily. So please keep, them, keep those prayers in mind. And as Darius mentioned, our bishop is coming October 2nd, which means 
another opportunity for people to pass under the bishop's hands. So if you've been thinking about, or you know someone who's been thinking about formally joining the church, this is a great time to do it. And we will do, uh, we'll work with those interested to set up the classes so we can do this together. So please leave here thinking about what children do I know, what teens do I know, who might like to be part of this congregation who's, who's been asking questions or wanting to know more, invite them to come and learn more. We are here to share what God has given us. And, um, and a quick thank you to all who worked so hard. For those of you who were not here, the organ concert Friday night was magnificent. I have never heard that organ do some of the things I heard it do that night. And I've been in this space for over 12 years. It was wonderful. So we're going to try to get him back. But know that these special offerings are real gifts to us, and we give great thanks to all who made that possible. There were workers here getting everything moved around. You've noticed, I think, the organs in a different place. And there were people who made a reception, people who played the carillon for us, our carolinist. Chuck Nix was out there and even invited somebody to do a duet with him. So, you know, if you're interested in just learning the very basics, Chuck is always willing to invite you on the bench. So as we get ready to go, a blessing. Let us remember that Christ has no hands or feet on this earth but our own. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, to be generous to give. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father,